Shaman Infomel, man. I want to take y'all through this journey, man. Where I've been at, man. I got like a little testimony documentary or whatever you want to call it on, you know, of me, myself, man, of doing this, this time, of all this time of doing this Godcore hip hop slash AKA gospel rap, AKA Christian rap, conscious rap, whatever you want to call it, life rap. You know, that's what I've been doing, man, for all these years, man, since 99, man. I remember writing the first song called The Final Chapter. And you know, just that song in itself, man, it, like turned me on, man. It was like, after that conversion, it turned me on to let me know, man, you, you definitely have a purpose of your gifting, you know, and what you need to do with it. You need to use this gift to go out and reach people, you know, to, to let people know, you know, because to me it was like, what I had just come into and found in Christ, you know I mean? It was like, I had to let somebody else find it because, you know, as you go back a little bit in history, like I got to tell y'all just a little bit more about in the history of it. Um, I found God through music, you know. My conversion came through sitting back, and y'all might not believe or you might not say, but it come from me just sitting back listening to a song called Hellraiser by Tupac. And in this song, he kept saying, Dear Lord, can you hear me? It's just me, a young nigga trying to make it on these rough streets. And when I heard that, man, it hit me so far in the heart, man. And it was like, man, he needed God. And it was like, how much more you need God if you're trying to follow him? So, you know, it's like that right there pierced me, man. And it made me question my existence. And because of that, you know, it all brought me to my conversion. When I dropped down and told the Lord, I said, man, God, if you be who you are, I said, come save a nigga. You know what I mean? And that was my words, exact words. And since that day, man, everything seems like it's been changed. And I know it has. I know he done been there, man. I, I done been so far now, man. You know? So it was like, I wrote this song called The Final Chapter, and that got me sparked, you know? And I just started, I was writing, man. I mean, I was coming with it, writing and writing, man. And, you know, um, trying to get in the studio then. Like, man, look, you writing these raps now? And I mean, I used to try to go to studios back one time before, you know, but now I really got an urgency to go to the studio. It's like, so, okay, we're trying to get in the studio. Now, let me tell y'all, I ain't gonna put nobody's names out there. You know what I mean? Even though sometimes you should, but you know, in this case, things are a little bit cool. You know, it's more love, mellowed out. I ain't gonna put no names out there, but I will say this. As a young man coming into Christ and having a gifting, and trying to get a place where you can be in with your people. Now, because you know what life, you're trying to find out what life is about, you want to be with more people who are about that. So, I come, I'm trying to get into a studio. I had people who knew me, you know, from where I was working at at the time, Black and Decker. And a dude was like telling this dude who was big into Christian rap and he was recording everybody, you know, or I'm gonna say this, he was the guy who if you was a, gospel rap person that you wanted to be with you know what i mean to get in the studio with you wanted to become brothers with them you know what i mean so that you can make your gift and cultivate it and keep going so a man told me he told this dude yo he was telling this dude about me he was like man look i know this dude man his name Mont, man he right man and so next thing dude finally i guess this dude's number and he was like, give, him, give me a call, you know, give him a call. So I gave him a call and everything. And then when I gave him a call, man, everything inside of me, what I wanted and hoping for is the brotherly love and being able to connect with your brothers and become one and y'all's teaming up and everything, man. You know, it was like that whole thing changed, man. It was like. As soon as I got to him, it was like all these questions. Who are you? Um, who your pastor? What church you go to? What denomination is it? Um, it was so much legalistic stuff, man. He never even gave me a chance, the opportunity as a man or, or a brother in Christ to even connect with him. You know what I mean? It was, it was like... I got hit with a brick wall, man, and that hit me so hard, man, just to see, like, man, these are supposed to be your brothers, man. 
and they don't even want you to come in the studio with them without you being able to answer a 50 questionnaire thing about who you are and you know never even found out like what my conversion is you know he like he didn't care nothing about it, it was like who you belong to and all this stuff I'm like yo thought we was you know trying to trying to get in with the lord the people of the lord that's what i thought i was trying to get with well make a long story short man end up saying you know lord you'll provide for me somewhere you know because i didn't want to be there i didn't even want to kick a rap for him no more you know what i mean i didn't want to record with him or nothing because why would you want to you know after thought that you was gonna be brotherly and you got met with this religion religious people so me trusting god all of a sudden my man black rose told me that for studios was open you know what i mean down in law so next thing i know him like hey i know what they do there but hey man if that's what god got for me i'm going in there so next thing i go in i'm paying my money to go record in the studio you know and while i'm there man i'm seeing really actually god was using what i was doing you know what I mean? I'm in the surrounded, man. I think Keith Johnson maybe been the only other person that might have been Christian like me that would come in there. You know, and man, we, you know, I was just bringing it, man. Bringing it raw. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm raw there. You know what I mean? Just coming with what I got, man, and thanking God, praying before I go in the booth that he, that he let me drop these jewels, man, and that it be something that would be effective, man. You know, so they gave me the spot. You know what I mean? It come to a point where they gave me a spot to eventually I was end up allowing to be able to record some time in there for free. You know, because they was making a deal with my man who I was cool with. And my man was like, made me part of the deal. So it was like, okay, as long as you do some things we did for them, with, you know, on the internet, my man did some things for them on the internet. And because of that, he helped me out to get recording for free. I'm in the world's thing, in a world's place. In, the, in what you would call the darkness, bringing the light, man. I was allowed to be blessed through them. You know, I mean, that's God, man. You know, to see he could use guys like them, man, to still set it on fire. You know that, that's why I tell people, man, I can't, I can't limit him, man. You know, when the church didn't step for it, he made the world step up and give their stuff over and let me put it down. So, you know what I mean? After spitting rhymes and stuff for a while on mp3.com, at the time before all this Facebook, MySpace and all this stuff, mp3.com was the place where you was trying to put your music on, on it online. You know what I mean? And I'm like on there, you know, at the time and the only people you got up there is really at the top part of the charts. Besides independent people, you had the mainstream artists like Master P and all them and that's thing. One of my songs got in that rotation of kicking it, the king of the kings. And it, it, that thing went all the way up to like number 24 on the whole list of the whole world's chart at the time on mp3.com and I was like blown away like man this is king of the kings man it's in the rotation you know people are playing it man I mean it's getting hit so you know I felt good as a mug man just to be able to say look that's that's on there man you know I mean I'm, I'm gospel Christian rap man doing this and I'm on there with them putting it out there on number 24 in the whole United States you know, but you know, other than that, man, but um back to what I was on, man, you know, it was just like um just after Fasar, you know what I mean, I sent a uh um a demo to Grape Tree Records at the time. They was to me the hottest they had the hottest artists and the most legit, I thought, artists that was in Christian music at the time, rap music, doing it. So I sent my joint to them. And you know. At the time, I got a letter of response back saying, you know, the guy said he was full of a whole roster right now. He's too full. And, you know, really couldn't, you know, take me at the time or, you know, or do anything with me. So I was like, all right, you know, but me, I'm like working with my man Ron West at the time and my man Black Rose, too. And so Ron West had West, him and a dude named Brian Calloway, West Cal Records. So they start letting me release a few songs, you know, with them. You know what I mean? Just handshake. You know what I mean? It was just love, just handshake. These guys from the world, man. But, you know, white guy, Ron West, and just handshake, man. It was just, it was just like brothers. 